Now, I've gone on record stating that this is the worst Dark Tower book that there is. Now, having reread it, does that still hold up? First things first, before anything else, f that prologue. Secondly, same format as last time with the Dark Tower series is I'm going to attempt to do just a little bit of spoiler free stuff, give my rating, and then I'll give you a, a warning to get out before I just kind of discuss the book and, and full spoilers or, or whatever. So anyway, do I still feel like this is the worst book? I don't know. I'm going to hold off on my full judgment of the of the book until after I've read all of the books. I can't really say because I haven't reread all of them, but I have reread this one. And I can't say it just it still feels like it's going to be the worst. That's not saying much because these this is my favorite book series of all times. These are all good books, but at all, out of the bunch, I have always felt like that's the just not just the worst or the weakest or my least favorite. There, I'll be nice. And it's a combination of two things, as far as I can tell. First and foremost, it's a step away from, or a step, I would say a step down from the first book, but once again, I'm being nice and I'm going to say a step away because the first book was so good and so up here, but it was doing one thing and it was doing the world building and, and all of that setup and you're, 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 you're existing in mid world and that's where I want to be. And instead of being there and in Midworld, we now are over here and we're doing something different. Um, and for a lot of people, that was great. And it was a lateral move or even an, an upward move. And to me, it was it was just a step away from what was being done in the first book. And to me, that it took me away from what I really wanted. Then a lot of people will say, the first one felt like a prologue. The second one's where it picks up or the story starts. I would very much highly argue that is not the, how this feels. This feels like the first book did the world building and the setup and got you ready to go. And by the end of the first book, you're like, oh, 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 oh I'm ready. Let's get this story going. And book two goes, whoa, 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 hold up. We can't start the story until we've drawn the three so this feels like basically this just feels like okay hold on pause the story so that we can put the team together then hit play and resume the story in book three so it's like book one gets y'all built up and ready to start the story and book two says hold on pause and we'll unpause in book three and this pause which is all of book two just was a major bummer for me. I always, I just wanted rip that cord and go. And it was not, that's not, it's like, hope, 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 hold on. We'll get there after this book. Uh, so for people to be like, it's the best of the stereo. I don't get it. I never will. Anyway, whatever. I don't want to harp on it too much because I do know so many people that say that this is just somehow their favorite one in the series. And I don't, I don't, I don't want people too angry with me, but. But it's still, as far as I can tell, I'll, I won't give my final verdict till later, but as far as I can tell, it's probably going to be the weakest of the bunch. It just, it, it's never been my favorite. So if the first book was almost like an exercise in wonder and world building, this one, on the other hand, is more of an exercise in tension. If you are going to pause the story, which he kind of does, or at least pause the, the main forward driving force of the story, then you at least, at least get something in return that's going to keep you invested so you're not like, well, uh, I don't even care. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I dropped something and I broke my audio. And while I was fixing my audio, my camera died. This is a complete disaster. Um, so this is this is an exercise in tension. It keeps you keeps you there. It keeps you invested. It keeps you on board. And it really, honestly, that tension and 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 Stephen King's just a wonderful handling of it is really what keeps this book from being a five. Because um, this could have become. 
Jeez. This could have become the Nemesis games of this series. It really could have. But because he's such a damn good writer and he injects that tension and he really doesn't let it go on a level that most people just don't do or can't do. Now, all that being said, I really just kind of want to talk about the book. So I'm going to say overall rating for this book, I would give it an eight. I know I think I said that all these books are nines and tens, but realistically, after rereading it and looking at it and just delving into it, I really think that this is just as a book, it's just a good solid eight, um, which is really good book, but it's just not that next level thing that that some of the other ones uh, are. The gunslinger felt a bright flare of pain in his right hand, but there was no time to think about that now. He pushed with the heels of his soggy boots, clawed with his hands, and managed to get away from the wave. Did it, Jake? The monstrosity inquired in its plaintive, Won't you help me? Can't you see I'm desperate voice? And Roland saw the stumps of the first and second fingers of his right hand disappearing into the creature's jagged beak. That was the third page of this book. Page three of the prologue. I don't think I've ever been more shocked by anything reading something ever than than that. Like, we are starting a seven book series with a right-handed gunslinger and in the third page of the prologue of the second book, he loses his right hand. Not the whole thing, but the functionality of it. The the ability to be a gunslinger. Yeah. It just my mind. This 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 is the kind of stuff is where my just my mind exploded. That also is going to inform the rest of this series all the way through to book seven. Because now you know you're not safe. He's not safe. Nothing is safe, nothing is sacred. King will take anything away from his people and from you, the reader, that you don't have a safety net anymore. Anything that keeps you nice and warm and cuddly when you're reading a book, just to for f***ing forget about it because he doesn't care. and He can do anything he wants at any time. And then he doesn't give it back. It's, it's, he lets that ride and he lets it ride forever. I mean, other authors or maybe even lesser authors would, would, would give it back or at least at the very least, they'd either find a way to like, you know, this is technically falls in the realm of fantasy. They could have magicked it up. He could have went into a, I don't know, went to an Oracle in a cave and, and magicked his fingers back. We, whatever, or they would have quickly found a way to find a workaround. They would have healed rapidly, and then he would have learned to hold the gun in a new way, uh, or something. They would have, and it would have been like, cue the montage if it was a movie. And he would have, you know, he would have suffered for a minute, and then there would have been some, all right, let's get this over with, and get him back to functionality. And King's like, no, he's going to burn with fever, but we're really going to let this man suffer and we're going to suffer with him because we're not going to magic our way out of it. We're no, there's no fast recovery. There is no recovery, really. Uh, it's just amazing. He's just going to dwell on this for several hundred pages and, and just really drag this man's suffering out. This is another, when I say it's just an exercise in tension. This is what really elevates this. But I said, this could have been the nemesis games of this series. And instead, King just knows what to put in there to really dial it right back up to an eight, right back up to where you need it to be for this to be a really good book. Now, I feel like the step, the world building is just an obvious step down from the first one. The first one had, because of the simple fact that the first one you're in Midworld, and Midworld is such a fascinating and wonderful place to be. I mean, it's a terrible place, but it's a wonderful place to be 
reading a book because it's just so awesome and it's wonderful to learn about and dive into and you learn a little bit about the history and his history and that was so much fun and then by comparison being in our ish world in new york city is super fucking boring yes there's some important stuff that's being added here like the portal fiction or the portal fantasy or whatever you want to call that which is going to be quite important to the story and the universe and the lore as a whole. So we are building on what we started and we're getting more in that sense. But just the fact that for so much of the book, we exist in New York City. It's, it can't help but be a step down from the first book. It's just, there's, there's no two ways about it. Then you got your characters. King is the king of character. I think I've said that before. I think I'll say it again, but I, I don't even know what to say about King's characters at this point. Nobody does it quite like he does. And here they are, and here they... Uh, they're great. It's 10 out of 10. Give them his characters. Whatever. Um, but as far as characters are concerned, King never, ever, ever, ever does a bad job. I mean, he's just... That's probably I shouldn't say that because I'm going to find a bad character book and that I'm going to bitch about it I guarantee it and I really want to add in here this enjoyment factor and when I was going through this and really kind of working it out in my brain I almost put it in as the cool factor because some of the things I it's just so cool he it's so painfully obvious that he's a nerd when you're reading it that it's just not I just can't bring myself to call it the cool factor it's the enjoyment factor but I enjoy it so much because it's just so much fun to read the way he's written it. And it is kind of cool. Like, for example, so far as he could tell, not one of them was armed. He saw no dagger nor sword, let alone a gun. What kind of trusting sheep were these? So it kind of simultaneously perfectly illustrates Roland and his character in the way that he thinks, but it's also just kind of fun to read. And then one of my favorites where the fun factor is concerned. The stairs were choked with people who had reversed their downward course when the yelling and shooting started, obsessed with that morbid and somehow unique New Yorker's curiosity to see how bad, how many, how much blood had been spilled on the dirty concrete. Yet somehow they still found a way to shrink back from the man in the blue suit who came plunging down the stairs. It wasn't much wonder. He was holding a gun. Another was strapped around his waist. Also, he appeared to be on fire. And this is an exclusive to to these books this isn't exclusive to the dark tower in any way shape or form this is just king's style in general and in defense of those people who say that this is um uh their favorite or they feel like this is a step up from the gunslinger i will say that this does his flavor and flair and style feels like it bleeds through the page a little bit more in this book than the last book. So if that's really the X factor for you, then okay, I can see where that's where you're getting that more so from this book than you would have gotten from the gunslinger, even though it was also there too. Anyway, so, uh, you know, I could probably go on for days if you really wanted me to about the Dark Tower. So, I feel like we're just going to leave this here uh, for, for, for fear of going on for the rest of my life. And I guess I'll just see you the next time around for the Wastelands. I'm very excited about this one.